All right, so hello everybody. My name is Dr. Mike Kosolobo. Uh, I am the head of New City Chiropractic Center, which is a chiropractic office only about a mile, mile and a half from you guys. Uh, I'm going south on 304. Uh, if you know where the old Texaco gas station used to be, which isn't there anymore, but now there's a brand new office building uh, with a big clock on the wall. So I used to say, my office is next to the Texaco gas station. Then when the Texaco gas station closed, I used to say I'm next to the old toxic waste dump. So now I say I'm next to the new building with the big clock on the wall. But that's my office, uh, 490 Route 304. Um, I'm very happy to be here. I want to thank Veronica for having me again. I always enjoy coming to the, uh, to the library, even pre-COVID. I've done a number of uh, workshops in-house there, so maybe some of you were there. I love doing it. I mean, I have a passion about being a chiropractor. I've been a chiropractor for 34 years, and I love every minute of it. But in addition to treating my patients, my other passion is education. So we love to do community service. Uh, community outreach. So we do workshops on all different types of topics. But when, like Veronica said before, when we set this up even before COVID, it has become even more appropriate now uh, because we're going to be talking about urban ergonomics this evening. All right. Um, I've been blessed since the beginning of this COVID uh, pandemic to be open the entire time because we're a um, essential worker. And it's actually very fitting that tonight we're doing the talk on uh, September the 16th, because when I thought back exactly six months ago to this very day was March the 16th, when the whole world started to close. That was the Monday when everything started to close. I remember going into my office that day and patients calling in a panic. And by the end of that week, we started cutting back on our hours. And that's when NBA closed and businesses started to close. So that really became chaotic, which means that for the last six months, there's been a lot of people who have been really disassociated from the world. I mean, I have patients who have barely been out of their house in six months, uh, which is not good physically, emotionally, mentally. All right. Uh, the biggest thing is that most people have been working from home. If you remember that first week, they were saying, OK, we're going to shut down for two weeks and we're going to reevaluate beginning of April. Well, now it's six months later and many places are still closed and many businesses are still not back to where they're supposed to be, which meant that there's been almost again, you've heard a lot this new normal people working from home, people who are not working, staying home all day. So either you're working from home on your computer, uh, on your laptop, on your desktop, or you're sitting home watching Netflix or old movies or videos. I mean, how many patients have watched more Netflix in the last six months than they watched in the last six years? I mean, I have a lot of patients that have caught up on a lot of shows. So uh, there's been a lot of people sitting home. The reason I'm so happy that I've stayed in the office is because so many more patients have actually needed services more now than ever before. Between number one, the stress of what's going on. Number two, people not eating well because they're either snacking or out of their normal routine. Number three, not exercising. I mean, gyms just recently opened and even those gyms, many people don't feel comfortable going to right now. So not exercising as much. And the most important thing that we're gonna to address tonight is just poor posture. People sitting on their uh, couches all day long or in their recliners or even worse, laying in bed all day. Now I want you to think of something. When you, before COVID, when you, your normal routine, you got up in the morning, maybe you went to the gym or you went for a walk, you drove to the office, you sat down for eight hours, but during that time you got up, you went and talked to your coworkers, you went to the copy machine, you went to lunch, you went to the water fountain. Five o'clock came, you got back in your car, you drove back home, you walked your dog or you went for a walk with your spouse, you ate your dinner, then you sat down for a couple hours, watched TV, read a book, went to bed, all right? Now, most people are getting up seven or eight o'clock in the morning. They're sitting at their computers right away because there's nothing else to do. And they're spending the entire eight, 
10, 12 hours or more sitting all day long, a lot of my patients are telling me they're working harder and longer hours at home now than they were before. So they're not getting done with work sometimes 8, 10, 11 o'clock at night. That's a long time sitting. So what are we seeing in the office? Increase of neck pain, neck stiffness, neck tightness, headaches, upper shoulder, upper back pain, radiating symptoms, and I'll show you why in a minute. So pain into the arm, sometimes numbness or tingling, wrist problem, hand problems, middle back conditions from hunching forward without sitting properly, and then lower back problems from either slouching too much or lying around too much. So therefore, what I wanna talk about this evening is some very simple tips that we can do on a daily basis starting tomorrow to make our workflow easier, to make our posture better, and to make us have less pain. And that's where we're gonna start. So we're gonna do a, 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 a workshop tonight on ergonomics. What is ergonomics? You've probably heard the word before, okay? It comes from two terms, Greek words. Ergon means work, and nomos means law. So it's the law of work. Really, in a nutshell, ergonomics is the study of people's efficiency in their workplace. So it's how you're doing things. If you're working as a laborer, how you're lifting, how you're bending. If you're a computer programmer, how you're sitting, how you're using your computer. If you're uh, working in your garden, how you're bending, how you're crouching, how you're lifting. All these things are what makes ergonomics. So we're gonna do a, uh, a screen. Uh, okay, hopefully you can all see this. And we're gonna talk tonight about ergonomics, okay? This is actually a picture of many of my patients, what they're looking like this part, this time of the year, okay? They're slouching, they're sitting forward, they're not really uh, engaged with their workplace. And we're gonna show you some things you can do to help that. Now, since we talked about this is a new normal that we're into now, we're gonna use a new acronym that I want you to learn and remember, which is gonna help you when you're thinking about ergonomics in your workplace. And that uh, new acronym is actually new, okay? N-E-W. N stands for neutral posture. We're gonna talk in a couple minutes about how important normal and neutral posture is, okay? Many people right now are sitting with their heads forward, coming forward. We have a, a term in chiropractic called forward head posture, which means your shoulders are rolled forward, your head is down. That causes a lot of imbalanced irritation into your neck muscle because your neck should normally be curved backwards. You're in this position, which puts a lot of strain on your neck, causes pain. The nerves that come out of your neck area supply not just the muscles of your neck, but also shoulder, arms, and hands. So this forward head posture is going to cause eventually a lot of problems in your shoulder, arms, and hands also, okay? Um, when you're sitting neutral, we're going to talk about how important it is to have an erect posture so that you have a 90-degree angle from your back to your hips, from your hips to your lower legs, from your lower legs to your ankles, and your ankles to your feet. They should all be even 90-degree ankles. Okay, the E is going to stand for eyes and elbows, and we're going to talk about the importance of making sure that your eyes are focused properly, they're not straining too much, and we're going to talk about the importance of elbows and forearms and making sure that those structures are relaxed when we're working. And W is going to be work area. We're going to be talking about how important it is to have a clean, concise, and well-managed workflow area in front of you. Okay, well, let's start by talking about the four areas we're going to focus on when we're talking about sitting. Number one, we're going to talk about how important it is to make sure that your body and your chairs are in alignment. Second, we're going to talk about how important it is to make sure that your feet are relaxed and parallel to your floor. Number three, we're going to talk about how important it is to have an easy movement between your hands, your mouse, and your keyboards, and how important that is. And number four, we're going to talk about how important your focus is from your eyes to your screen. So let's start first about the most important thing, and that's a chair, okay? First and foremost, I tell patients all the time, 
Soft may be comfortable, but soft is not good for you, all right? So if you're sitting most of your day in a soft chair or on a soft couch, that's 90% of your problems, okay? We need to sit in something that's supportive to our backs. Our backs should normally have what's called a lordosis. So we normally have a backward curve to our back. When we're sitting on something soft, our backs kind of flow into it, and so we have this posture which causes a lot of strain on the muscles of your lower back. So now you have lower back problems because your pelvis is tilted, causes your neck to come forward, which causes that forward head posture that we talked about, okay? So really important that we have a firm chair. So I tell patients, if you're sitting at home, and especially now during, if you're working at home, make sure you have either a firm back chair, such as a kitchen chair, or a dining room chair, something that has good back support. I use a, because I sit at my countertop and I'll show you at my kitchen in a little while, but I use a really good bench chair, all right? So it has a good hard back to it, it has a firm seat, and it has railings here for me to be able to rest my feet on, which we'll show you in a little bit, is very, very important. Now, even if you're using a very good chair, if you're sitting for a longer period of time, you need more support even than that. So I recommend patients get what's called a lumbar pillow, okay? Remember how I said you have a normal backward curve? Well, a lumbar pillow has this, this teardrop uh, shape, which conforms to that curve. So when you're sitting with a lumbar pillow behind your back, it's kind of taking in that space, that nape of your back where you put your hand in. It takes that area up, and now it helps to keep your body more erect, all right? I have a lumbar pillow here at my house. I have one in my car. I have one in my office, okay? So these, again, we have them for purchase in our office, but you can get them on Amazon, any of these uh, online stores, you can get these. Or if you don't want to buy one, simply take a throw pillow. If you take a thin pillow, put it behind your back, it'll serve the same purpose, okay? So I put that, number one, right in my back. And now, God, I feel so much stronger when I sit back, okay? In addition to that, if you're sitting for longer than, let's say, four hours a day, your butt is going to get sore, right? So what I tell patients to, is to purchase something like this, which is a contour ergonomic seat, all right? So now what this does for me, is it has heavy memory foam, so it's gonna give me a lot more cushion for my tush. In addition to that, it has contours for your legs. So now you can put your legs in here, which is gonna give your legs more support. And most importantly, it has a cutout here, which is where your tailbone sits. You ever notice when you sit for a long period of time how your tailbone gets sore? Well, that's because it's a bony prominence, okay? And, and when you're sitting on it, there's not a lot of meat on it so over, there's not muscle, so it's hitting and it's gonna get sore. When you sit on something like this, what happens is this allows their space for that tailbone. So now when I sit, this contour there, now it kind of distributes the weight around it and now it takes the weight off of it. And it makes it so much more comfortable for, for me to sit in. So I recommend the lumbar support pillows and these cushions, but most importantly, make sure you're sitting in a firm chair. All right, next we wanna talk about how important it is to have your feet level to the floor. If your feet are not level to the floor, it's gonna cause a couple problems, which I'm gonna show you in a minute. Now, the most important thing of making sure that your feet are level to the floor is what? The height of the seat. So if your seat is too high, you're gonna have a tendency to, to slouch forward. If it's too low, you're gonna to be too high. So let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, look at this lady on the left first. Well, actually, let's look at the right first. This lady, let's say you have short legs, okay? You're gonna, if you're, legs are short, what's going to happen is over time, you're going to start slouching forward so that your feet end up on the floor. When that happens, what happens to your lower back? Well, now you lose that backward curve because you're going to have a tendency to slide forward. So you're slouching with your back, which gets rid of that lower back curve and causes more back pain. Plus what happens to your neck? Forces your neck down this way causing your shoulders to come forward, causes more 
uh, forward head posture. So slouching, if the chair is too high, it's no good. Now look, look at the lady on the left. Hers is too high. So if it's too high, automatically, and this is even more so than this, her knees are gonna be higher than her hips. If your knees are higher than your hips, it automatically forces you to bend forward. So you're leaning forward, which causes a uh, space between the back of the chair and your lower back, causes lower back problems. Plus what happens to your neck? If you're leaning forward, your neck comes up. So you have to look up. Now that causes an extension of your neck, causes pain and stiffness into the neck and into the shoulders, okay? So that's why it's important to make sure that your seat height is proper. So there's two, two scenarios. Number one, if your seat is too high, so if when you sit in your chair, think of it this way, move your chair away from your desk, sit back so that you're sitting up straight and tall so your back up is against it, see where your feet fall on the floor. They should be flat on the floor and you should have a 90 degree angle between your hips and your, and your leg, your leg and your lower leg, okay? That's how it should be. If you're too high in your chair, well, you have a couple options. Number one, you can lower the seat height. Some chairs have an adjustment where you can lower it. Or the most convenient thing is to what? Raise your feet. So that's where these footrests come in, in place. Again, you can get these on any ergonomic or in on Amazon, or guess what? You can be cheap and just get some books, put them up underneath your, your feet, or get um, a piece of wood, anything to put underneath your feet to raise your feet up until your leg is parallel to your seat, okay? Also, let me tell you one other thing which I forgot. You wanna make sure that the depth of the seat is proper. So when you're sitting back in your chair, you should be able to take two or three fingers and put them between the front of the chair and your calf muscle, all right? If you're too far back in the chair, this puts pressure against your calf and against your knee, and that can cause knee problems or it can cause vascular problems into your calves. If you're too far forward, again, it's gonna cause your leg to collapse underneath and it can cause ankle or lower leg problems. So ideally you want your leg, your, your finger, like three finger length between where the front of the seat is and where the back of your calf is, all right? But getting back, so if your chair is too, if you're too high, lower the chair seat or put something underneath your feet. If you're too low, that's almost easier because now what you can do is just raise up a cushion. You can get something like this anyway, or get cushions or pillows underneath your butt to raise you to a sufficient amount until your feet are flat on the floor, okay? So now we talked about back being firm, making sure that your feet are supported. Next is gonna be hands to mouth. Hands to mouth, not mouth, okay? You wanna make sure that when you're sitting, so now that you're sitting properly, okay? You wanna make sure that you're sitting in a natural position and that your forearm is parallel to whatever you're working on. Now, if you're lucky enough to have a good chair that has armrests, those armrests are typically adjustable. You wanna raise or lower until you have a relaxed shoulders, your arms are back, you're not reaching forward, and your forearm is flat to your, to your armrest. If you're not, if you're working on a table or a desk like I am, when I'm sitting now, if you look here, you can see that my forearm is parallel to the countertop, okay? If I was like this on my, on my uh, mouse, what do you think would happen after a couple hours? Well, now I'm gonna get a lot of strain because these muscles are working hard to try and support my wrist. So it's gonna cause a lot of strain here and strain just comes up like a chain reaction into your shoulder, into your back, and into your neck. In addition to that, your, arm, your hand is not gonna be relaxed, so you're gonna start to have pressure onto your wrist, which can cause pain into your hands. Have you ever heard of a condition called carpal tunnel syndrome? Well, orthopedic surgeons love it because they love doing surgery on, on people with carpal tunnel syndrome. And what happens is because of inflammation in this part of the wrist, it causes pressure on the nerves here, 
causes numbness, tingling, weakness into the hand. Well, guess what? Many of these conditions can be helped with physical therapy and ergonomics. So making sure that your arm is relaxed properly and that your wrist is relaxed properly. That's really important to do. So height, remember your key, and your keyboard and your mouse should always be at the same level of your forearm. So your elbow should be at 90 degrees. Your, your shoulders should be back, okay? Make sure your arm rests or wherever you're relaxing, you're sitting close enough so that you're not reaching forward. If I'm like this, what's gonna happen to these muscles? They get tight. So you wanna make sure that your arms are back, your shoulders are relaxed, and now your hand is nice and relaxed. Also, with your mouse, See here, you want to make sure that your wrist is relaxed, in a relaxed position, okay? Look to this right. See if your hand is too high. Now you're going to be in this position that's cranking back that irritates the muscles here, okay? Likewise, you don't want to be too far down this way. Here's a simple thing. Many people will get these wrist supports where it's a piece of cushion or foam that you put underneath your wrist here to keep your, your, uh, your hand in a little bit of a flex position, very natural. Here's a more inexpensive way you can do it. I take a um, washcloth, roll it up, put a piece of tape around it, and now I put that underneath my arm. Don't put it underneath your wrist, put it about two inches below your wrist. And now look how nice and relaxed my arm is. I can use my, my mouse, Nice and easy, I can work on my keyboard and my hand is gonna be relaxed. So it's really important to make sure that your wrists and your forearm are relaxed at all time. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is the importance of eyes and your, your, the relation of your eyes to your screen, okay? Number one, you always wanna make sure that you're sitting with your eyes not too close to the screen because if you're too close, what happens? You have to squint. It causes shoulder problems because your head is an extension. Likewise, too far back, you're squinting to see now because you can't see, your eyes aren't good enough, and now you have that forward head posture. So again, you wanna be in neutral, that end, neutral spine at all times, all right? As you're doing that, here's an easy way to remember where to set up your screen. Take your hand right now, put your arm outstretched, and your fingers should touch the, the, your, the flat screen, all right? That's how you know you're the proper distance. Also, make sure your screen is always at perpendicular. You don't want it to be too far back. You don't want it to be too far forward. You want it to be perpendicular or 90 degrees. Hand out, and that's the proper distance that you should be, okay? Also, close your eyes, keep your head neutral, and now open your eyes, and where does your, where does your eyesight hit your monitor. It should hit the top of the monitor or slightly above. So when you're looking straight, normally neutral, your eye should hit the top of the monitor or maybe about an inch above the monitor. That's gonna give you this viewing angle of 35 degrees, all right? Which means that when you're looking now from the top to the bottom of your screen, you never have to move your neck. You're just moving your eyes 35 degrees up or down, and you're going to be able to view the entire screen. That's really, really, really important to not only reduce eye strain, but neck strain at the same time. Okay? Also, if you're using a single monitor, which most of us do, you want to make sure that you're sitting directly in front of the monitor in the center of your body. All right? So many of my patients, I'm going to give you an opportunity at the end, I'll tell you about sending in pictures so, so we can do some, some telehealth ergonomics on your works, workstation at home. But while I'll have patients you know, send me pictures or bring me pictures of how you're sitting. And so many people have their computer on the side. So now if you're sitting like this for half the day, what's gonna happen if you're rotating, if you're looking down, that's gonna cause a lot of upper back strain. So you wanna be neutral. So you want the center of your monitor to be in line with your body. Nowadays, many people are using double screens, whether it's for work or to play uh, video games. So if you have two screens and you're using both of them about 50-50, then what you wanna do 
is have them separate at the midline so that they're, the, the midline of the two screens is in your center. So now you're able to just move your eyes and just a slight angle of your head to be able to see both screens equally, all right? If, however, you're using one screen predominantly and the other one is more as a secondary screen, I suggest that you keep the primary screen as you are using a single and then put the second screen right next to it on a 30 degree angle. So now, again, you can look at that whenever necessary, but you're spending most of your time focus on the screen in front of you, okay? Another thing I wanna talk about, which is very important at this point, is if you're working, let's say you're uh, dictating or you're transcribing or you're working off a note or a book, if you have that book, let's say, in front of you here on your desk, okay? What are you doing the whole time? You're looking down, looking up, looking down, looking up. If you have notes, you're looking at your notes, looking up down, up. What I suggest that you do is what I've done is I just get a real inexpensive book stand, all right? Put your book or your notes in that stand and that can go next to your screen just like that second monitor would be, all right? So now, instead of looking down, looking up, all I have to do is just shift my eye focus and over. I can be, I can be transcribing, I can be writing my notes, taking notes without looking down and up as much as possible. So that's a really good tip for you to use. The last uh, acronym is W, all right? Work area. Now, I'm gonna show you something here. See how nice and clean my work area is in front of here? I cleaned it for you, it never looks this good, believe me, all right? But most people's look worse than mine do. I have so many people have, to, you're, think about it, how cluttered your, your work area is with extra books and extra notes and extra crap you don't even need, okay? Half-eaten peanut butter and jelly sandwiches or bagels, okay? So you need to clear your area so that it's clean and, and um, functional for you. And I want you to think of breaking up your workflow, your work areas into primary and secondary work areas. So what do I mean? Your primary work area are things that you're gonna use most frequently, like your mouse, like your keyboard, like your notes, like your pen. Those are things that you wanna keep in your primary work area. And by primary work area, I mean areas that when you're sitting neutral, like we talked about, and your arm is relaxed, things you can get at between, let's say, six and 12 inches of your wrist. So you can either move your wrist or very lightly with your elbow, okay? So those are things you're gonna be using, let's say 70, 80% of, of the time that you're sitting, okay? Secondary work areas are things that you're gonna use but are more supporting, maybe supporting documentation, books that you may wanna reference, um, a water bottle, a cup of coffee, maybe your cell phone that you keep close by. Those are things that should be within, let's say 12 to 24 inches of your neutral position so that you can get them easily, but you don't have to get them all the time. Anything other than that should be in your non-work areas or your tertiary work areas. And those are things you really don't need to get to anyway. So try to keep your work area clean Mentally, you'll feel better, but most importantly, from an ergonomic standpoint, you'll be better off, okay? Now, let's summarize what we've talked about so far. Number one, you wanna make sure that you're, uh, you adjust your chair to fit you, both in height and both in depth and both in support to your back, all right? Assure that you have adequate foot support, that when you're sitting, your seat height is proper so that your feet are flat and relaxed parallel to the floor. Three, you wanna make sure that your keyboard and your mouse are at the same level so that your arm and forearm is relaxed and you avoid reaching. And four is you wanna position your monitor one arm's length away so that you're avoiding neck pain from coming too far forward or too far back, okay? So what we're gonna talk about now is even if you do the best chance possible, even if you're sitting the best possible, 
you're probably sitting right now a lot more than you used to. Remember how we said when you were working, you were getting up, moving around. Now you have a tendency to be sitting all day long. So even in the best environment, at the optimal position, it's too much for your back and you're still gonna have some back problems. So I'm gonna give you really two simple tips that I want you to start doing tomorrow. One is for your eyes and one is just for your overall health. For your eyes, I want you to remember the 20-20-20 rule. What do I mean? Every 20 minutes of work, I want you to take a 20 second break and refocus your eyes on something that's 20 feet away. Why is that important? If you're sitting all day and you're staring at a screen, you're gonna get fatigued, your eyes are gonna get strained, you're gonna start having headaches, you're gonna start having more back and neck ache because of the strain and the tightness in the muscles. So by giving your eyes a chance to relax, even if they're the proper distance away, you need to take a break from staring at the monitor all day long. So every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break and look at something 20 feet away. Look outside, look out a window, look in the next room, okay? Look at whatever's in the kitchen. Do something with your eyes, but take them off the focus of your screen, all right? Your second uh, tip, is what I call the Costa Lobo 50-10 rule, which means, and I actually do this, my main days of doing my paperwork are Tuesdays and Thursdays. So what I'll actually do is I'll take my phone and I'll set my Google calendar, my Google alarm for 50 minutes. Every 50 minutes, I make sure to get up and move for 10 minutes, all right? So my alarm goes off and I'm up because guess what? Think about it or watch yourself, okay? If you don't do that, how fast two or three or four hours it goes by and you're doing work or you're watching TV and you're never moving, okay? And then you wonder why you get up and your back hurts. That's why, because there's no blood circulating when you're sitting. The muscles get stiff and cold and boy, you're gonna have problems, okay? And you gotta remember that sitting is the worst position for your back, even when you're sitting properly. Standing is better, lying down is better. So you need to get up from sitting. So your alarm goes off and get up, all right? Go to, if it's nice outside, if it's during the day, I implore you, go outside, take a walk, get some fresh air, okay? Uh, or walk around the house. If you have a load of laundry in the laundry, go take it out and fold a little bit of laundry for 10 minutes, okay? Go to the kitchen, get something to eat, Get some water, okay? One of the most important things I need you to do is hydrate on a daily basis, all right? Hydration is key. Uh, when you dehydrate, your muscles get stiffer, tighter, and you're gonna have more back problems, more muscular problems. And guess what? Water means drinking water. Coffee doesn't count as water. Beer doesn't count as water. Soda doesn't count as water. So if you want to have a one or two glasses, of cups of water, a, of coffee a day, that's fine. If you want to have a beer at the end of the day, that's fine. Don't ever drink soda because that, don't get me started. Soda, no one should ever be drinking soda. That's for another story. Uh, but water is water. So in addition to whatever else you're drinking, whether it's juice, whether it's seltzer, whether it's coffee or, or uh, uh uh, a beer every once in a while or some wine, you need to make sure that you're drinking four to six ounces of water a day. So uh, cups of water a day. So what a great opportunity that during those 10 minutes to get up and go drink six ounces of water and get up and move around, okay? So moving is very, very important, which is gonna take me to the final part of this webinar. And that is, I wanna give you some simple stretches that you can do on a regular basis, either during that 10 minute break in the action, or most importantly, you can do it in the morning when you first wake up, and in the evening at the end of the day, so you go to bed without a lot of tension in your back. So we're gonna start with some doing some very simple neck stretches. So from a normal position, again, what's normal posture? Shoulders are back, head is erect, sitting up straight and tall, okay? Remember in the old days, they used to tell you to do neck circles? Don't do that. Neck circles are terrible for your, for your neck because they couple joints, they couple motions, so they cause a lot of instabilities. So what you wanna do is you only wanna move in one direction at a time. Now our necks can move in six motions and you wanna take each motion, holding it in a stretch for 10 seconds. So starting from neutral, bring your chin to your chest till you feel a stretch in your neck muscles. None of your stretches should ever cause pain. Some people stretch really far, other people can barely stretch at all. 
go up to your tolerance, okay? So as soon as you start to feel that stretch, you hold that position and count to 10 seconds. Nice and easy. When you hold a stretch, it allows that muscle to slowly start to elongate. You don't wanna bounce any stretches because that does nothing for you. So hold the stretch and allow that muscle to slowly elongate, chin to chest. Then go in the opposite direction. So now you're gonna extend your head up and stretch back. And you're gonna feel a stretch in the front of your head, your neck, hold that for 10 seconds. After that, go straight. Next, you're gonna bring your left ear toward your left shoulder. Notice I didn't say left shoulder to left ear, okay? It's shoulders relaxed, left ear down to your left shoulder as far as you can without causing pain or stiffness. And then right ear to right shoulder. Your last two positions are rotation. So from this position, rotate your chin over your left shoulder till you feel a stretch here. 10 seconds, right chin over your right shoulder to your feel stretch here, hold that for 10 seconds. You can repeat each movement two or three times, okay? Next, for your upper back area, what we wanna do is a couple stretches for your middle back. So I want you, and you can do this with me now at home. I won't tell you if you're doing it wrong, don't worry about it. Gonna take one arm, put it over your shoulder, take your other hand, put it on your elbow, and you're just gonna push gently, gently, twisting. You're going to feel that stretch right between your shoulder blades. When you've been working like this all day, that's going to feel fantastic. So you hold that for 10 seconds. Same thing to the opposite side for 10 seconds. Okay. After doing each side two or three times, now we want to start stretching our chest back and activating the muscles of your back. Because again, if you're sitting like this, all right, those muscles are getting stretched and eventually they get weak. So we wanna activate them by pulling them back. So the best way to do that that I like is to take your hands, grab your wrist, keep your head straight and squeeze your shoulder blades. So you're gonna feel a stretch into your chest and squeeze your shoulder blades coming back. You can keep your head neutral or slightly extended. Don't look down, okay? Nice and easy this way. Another way you can do that is go into a, a door frame and stretch this way. So just kind of lean forward in the door and you're gonna feel the stretch here, okay? So those are two important exercises for your stretching of your upper back. Now, some of you may do yoga and you've heard of the cat-cow, which you do on your hands and knees, which is a great yoga stretch for your back. But you can do the same thing modified while you're working okay so what i tell patients to do is to put your hands on your desk like this okay and then what you're going to do is just move back a little bit and arch your back so now you stretch back and you're going to get a nice stretch in your lower back and then your upper back hold that for 10 seconds and then collapse forward keeping your arms uh, straight collapse forward this way head a little extended and now you're gonna feel the stretch here. Hold that for 10 seconds and go back and forth three or four times. So that's a modified cat-cow. Next, because we're using our wrists so much, we wanna prevent wrist strain. So simply take your fingers, keep your elbow locked, take your fingers with your other hand and pull back gently. Hold that position for 10 seconds, turn it over, same thing other way, stretch this way, and that's gonna stretch the top of the forearm, okay? Do each one three or four times, then spray your, splay your fingers out and do the same thing with your fingers, okay? To get the fingers moving, nice and easy, all right? Do that on both sides. Finally, for your lower back, okay? There's a couple things you can do for your lower back. We tell all our patients to do a knee to chest stretch where you're lying down flat in your, in your bed or on the floor and you're grabbing your knees and pulling them to your chest. You can do the exact same thing in a seated position while you're working. So during that 10 minute break, sit back in your chair, grab your knee, and you're gonna pull your knees to your chest. And you're gonna feel a nice stretch in your lower back area. Again, it shouldn't hurt. If you feel pain, back off a little bit, just to how far you can. 
Hold that for 10 seconds, put that leg down, pull the other leg up, hold it for 10 seconds, and back down. Do each side three or four times. Next, I want everybody up. So you're gonna stand up, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna, let me see if you can see this. You're going to open up your legs, okay? And now we're gonna be doing stretches for our groins and for our hips. So feet, toes facing forward, and from this position, you're just gonna bend one leg, keeping the other leg straight, and you're gonna feel a stretch into the groin muscle, okay? Hold that for 10 seconds, opposite side, the same thing. And do each side three or four times, okay? And the last one I want you to do is a squat. So we can do an air squat. So standing in this position, hands on your uh, pelvis, on your waist, st sitting, standing up straight and tall. You don't want to be bending forward when you do this. You want to be standing straight and tall and just bend at your knees until you feel the stretch in your, you're going to feel your quads, the front of your thighs, and you're going to feel it into the back of your butt. Down and then back up again. Only as far down as it feels comfortable for you. If you can only get it here, that's fine, okay? Another way you can do it is you can go against the wall. You can do a wall squat, where now you're leaning against the wall and you're just sliding down the wall and then coming back up. What that's doing is activating your gluteal muscles, which haven't been activated while you've been sitting for six or eight hours, okay? So you wanna activate those muscles. And again, during that 10 minutes, please go do some walking, go outside. If you have stairs, go up and down stairs, move. I guarantee you that if you move 10 minutes every hour, you're gonna have much less back pain. And I have patients that say, well, doc, I have no time for that. I mean, I have a busy schedule. I can't spend 10 minutes every hour. I have a work, work to do. And I tell them, you know what? Productivity will go up the better you're feeling. So if you're sitting for two or three hours at a time, your eyes are gonna get fatigued, your muscles get sore, you get tired and production down, okay? So by taking that 10 minute break, not only are you helping yourself feel better, but you're gonna help your productivity that much better also, okay? So remember the 20-20-20 rule, remember the 10-50 rule, and remember to do these exercises and stretches either during that 10 minutes or especially in the morning when you first wake up and in the evening before you go to bed, okay? So now, any questions that I have, gave a lot of information to you. So first and foremost, are there any questions? Hi, Veronica. Hello, I'm gonna turn on um, everyone's ability to unmute themselves. There weren't any questions in chat. Okay. If anyone has a question now, you can unmute and ask. And if not, uh, I'm going to give you a couple, a couple things. Number one, as I said before, um, a great thing is to take, if you're not sure, take pictures of your workstation, wherever you are. If you're home, if you're working from your counter, if you're working from your table, take pictures of that. And also have someone take pictures of you sitting there. You can then email those pictures to us at, um, our website is, um, New City Chiropractic is our website, and our Facebook page is New City Chiropractic at Facebook, and our email address is info at newcitychiropractic.com. So any of those vehicles you can use to get the information to us, we'll look at them, and then make sure you give us your email, and we'll get that information back over to you as things you can do to help that feel better. 